So if we're going to talk about the history of Blue Nose II, um, it's really intertwined with the shipbuilding industry here in Lunenburg uh, and the loss of the original Blue Nose. So when the original Blue Nose was, was lost in 1946, um, that really the town felt that. It felt that they'd lost maybe a chance to hold a Canadian icon and I think Captain Angus probably felt that the most. He, he tried desperately to save his beloved ship and, and was unable to and had to sell her in the end. Um, in the intervening years, post-war years, um, shipbuilding was still going on in here in Lunenburg and then in 1960 they built uh, Bounty for the Marlon Brando Mutiny on the Bounty. So that was a real uh, sort of spark of interest for the town, just built just down here at Smith and Rule and Shipyard um, and they understood that they could still build big ships, they could still big, build big sailing ships. So the decision was made to, that they would form a committee and try and build a Blue Nose II, a second Blue Nose. So they uh, worked with the Olin family and the provincial government um, to build a Blue Nose and that was going to be as a uh, yacht and as a promotional vessel for, for the Oland Brewery. They were selling schooner beer at the time, um, so they wanted to use that, use the ship to, to promote the beer and to promote the story behind Blue Nose and Captain Angus Walters. Um, so the ship was built in 1963, launched with huge fanfare here in, in town. Um, I still meet people to this day who will tell me that they were there for the launch, where they were standing, who they were with. Uh, it, it, it's incredibly uh, embedded into the, to the history of the town here. Um, so, 63 they launched a boat, uh, and the Olins headed um, from 1963 to 1971. Uh, largely successful, um, as the ship has been for most of her history. Uh, there was one tragic event during that time that, that will be uh, forever uh, meshed with the history of Blue Nose and they lost a deckhand over the side. Um, Neil, Neil Robitaille was lost in 1969, um, a loss that's still felt keenly within the Blue Nose alumni uh, today. Um, so the loss of seamen here in, in town is, a, is keenly felt. There's a big uh, memorial here just not far um, showing people lost off fishing vessels and, and uh, you know, Neil's name will be forever married with that tradition in the town here. Um, in 1971, um, the Olins decided uh, to move on with the Blue Nose and they sold her to the provincial government for one dollar or ten dimes as it's told to me. Um, and the government has been running the ship since then. Uh, Blue Nose 2's mission now as an ambassador vessel uh, for the province has had huge um, payoffs and, and allowed the ship to be involved in some tremendous uh, sort of worldwide noted events. Um, Upsail 76 was a tremendous uh, event where Blue Nose um, sort of led the, led the, led the world in, in, in having a country ship there that was non-military. Um, back in those days, even there was a Blue Nose float in the Rose Bowl Parade. Uh, again, tremendous outreach uh, before the times of the internet in a way to have Blue Nose in the province known for tourism. Um, today, under the guidance of the Lunenburg Marine Museum Society, which also manages the Fisheries Museum of the Atlantic, Blue Nose 2 carries on the good work of those done before her. One of our principal missions is an ambassador vessel for tourism in Nova Scotia. Our job is to uh, entice people to come to Nova Scotia and to learn about the seafaring history that to be found here. Um, we travel around uh, to festivals and to other communities um, and encourage people to come and see the ship and to, and to explore those towns. Uh, we also um, like to bring the history, uh, our own history, back to our communities. So we try and go to small communities like Canso or Terence Bay or Sambro, just hundreds of them, um, and put a big fishing community or a big fishing schooner back into that community. Um, it's a tremendous thing to, to watch people from a community come on board and start conversations and talk about fishing back in the day, what their grandfathers or great-grandfathers did, and those conversations will happen on the ship, and I know that they'll happen at the post office, and they'll happen in the restaurants, and they'll happen on the streets. It's a great way to keep history alive uh, in the communities of Nova Scotia. The other thing that we do is we take 14 young people, principally from Nova Scotia, but also from across Canada, um, and train them in traditional seamanship. Um, so they have to learn how to service blocks, how to varnish, how to paint, how to rig, how to climb aloft, and how to steer and sail a big schooner. Um, these are lifelong skills 
and memories that are transferable and so they go on in life. They'll learn how to work hard, they know how to put in long days, um, and how to overcome adversities put in front of them. So Blue Nose 2 has lots of missions. We try and accomplish them all well, um, and we are very proud to be representing Nova Scotia. So since 1963, there have been hundreds and hundreds of young people that have come and served aboard Blue Nose 2. When you're on board the vessel, uh, it's hard work. Long days, good weather, bad weather, inundated by crowds, living in small quarters. Um, it certainly changes how you see the world, it changes how you see life. Um, the work ethic that you learn here, uh, the ability to work long days, uh, to work with a team of people, that's a transferable skill that people will take on um, and carry through life and it doesn't matter what they're doing, what they choose to do in life, whether it's to go to sea or to do anything else. Is that ability to work with a team of people and to work hard until the job is done is a, is a skill that will last forever. Um, the friendships that, that go on, uh, that are formed on the ship, um, on cold night watches at sea, um, will last forever. You really get to know somebody, they get to know each other very well, um, and those bonds are, are forever. Blue Nose attracts visitors for many reasons. Uh, part of it is our location, it's nestled here uh, in downtown Lunenburg in the UN district of Lunenburg, which is historic. Uh, it fits with the time of the ship, so you come and sort of have the whole experience of what it was like to see the ship in the 20s and 30s. So when you talk about the ship itself, people will come because it's big. The Blue Nose had one of the biggest mainsails ever uh, for a working vessel. Um, so you can come in and experience you know, a large vessel with easy access. It's easy to come and go. You can book a harbor tour with us for two hours. It's not a big commitment of time. Um, and you can have a full experience of a big sailing ship. Uh, people come because of the history of the ship, because of her world famous uh, racing career in the 1920s and 30s. You know, she's on the Canadian stamp, she's on the dime, she's in the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame. So there's certainly people uh, that appreciate uh, the history of the vessel and what she represents. Uh, there are people that come because they know about sail training. They know about the young people that we have on the ship they come to talk to them and to share their experiences and to learn what their lives are like uh, being at sea or being uh, working on a vessel and a team of people. Um, so some people that come will have never seen a whale, will have never seen a uh, dolphin, will have never been away uh, from the sight of land. So they can come and talk to the young people and they can, can live vicariously through them. Um, and some people uh, just come to Lunenburg because they know that's a thing to do. Uh, it's one of our sort of Blue Nose as a magnet. Uh, we'll come and they get to see the Fisheries Museum of the Atlantic where you can experience fishing from a birch bark canoe all the way up through to modern fishing. Um, so it's a real chance uh, for people to understand fisheries on the east coast uh, of Canada and, and, and North America. So there's lots of different reasons why people would come to visit us. Um, I've certainly seen people that have spent their whole lives uh, knowing about the ship and never thinking they will be able to ever see her and almost in tears being able to stand on her deck um, and understanding sort of her place in Canadian history and as a Canadian icon. Uh, it's tremendous to see and it's, we're really proud to be able to share that story.